We're with John Kelly. John is a personal injury attorney in Phoenix, Arizona, and he's agreed to answer online questions related to Uber and Lyft car accidents. Uh, with that said, John, let's go into the first question. This question was from Danny. Uh, Danny says, um, I'm a part-time Uber, Uber driver. However, my question is for my mom, who is a passenger. She's el elderly and takes Uber occasionally to her doctor's office when I'm unavailable. She was involved in a wreck while she was a passenger. Her injuries were not major, but since she's old, it's, it's made it difficult for her to manage. What should I do? Well, luckily, if you are a passenger in an Uber vehicle, Uber provides insurance coverage for injuries that you will have. And if you're an actual passenger, you are, according to Uber's website, provided with up to a million dollars in injury coverage. What this means is that if you are in an accident and you're in an Uber vehicle, you're going to have insurance that's going to help cover your damages. So Danny's mother will need to open up a claim with Uber. She needs to notify him that she was in a vehicle and, and then just go ahead and make a claim just like she would any other insurance company based on her damages. Um, so she'll need to get treatment. Um, she'll need to have a doctor look her over, find out what her injuries are and, you know, set her up with a treatment program if she needs it or refer her out to whatever specialist she needs for her injuries. Now, interestingly, elderly people typically have a longer recovery time. That's okay. Um, it doesn't make a difference in the, in, in, in the claim other than that their bills are typically going to be higher. They treat for a little bit longer typically, and they still get to make a full recovery for all their damages and pain and suffering. All right. Um, this next question from Alex. Um, Alex says, my, myself and some friends were riding an Uber, and this guy was absolutely awful. He ended up having a wreck, which was no surprise. Three of us have very, very minor and minor injuries, but nothing serious. Um, do we have any way to get paid? Again, with Uber, as a passenger, even if there's three people, they will all be able to make a recovery through the Uber um, insurance provider. And every state has kind of different providers that Uber contracts with. Um, what they need to worry about is contacting Uber, giving them the details about when they were in the accident. They may want to contact an attorney about giving a statement to Uber because they will be making a claim to, against their um, insurance. If, if there's a third party that was the, the cause of an accident, they would go to that insurance company first. But because it was their driver, it's going to go off of Uber's insurance, their liability insurance should be a million dollars available to them because they were, the app was on, they were passengers. So again, they can treat, get doctor's notes, records, keep photos, everything that they can and um, make a claim against Uber's insurance. Okay, the next question was from Sarah. Sarah says, hello, John. I, I drive Lyft and was involved in an accident which was not my fault and I'm having a neck pain. I'm not sure what I should do at this point. Okay, in Sarah's in incident, this is a little different. The Lyft driver is her and another third party was at fault for the accident. So um, like all of these scenarios, you want to try to call the police, have them take uh, a report about how the accident occurred, get as detailed and much information against uh, uh, of the person that actually hit her. Um, if the person that hit her and caused the accident and caused her injuries has insurance, she'll be able to recover from that insurance company first, that third party insurance. If that party doesn't have enough insurance to cover all her damages, Lyft provides what we call underinsured motorist coverage for her. And she'll be able to make a claim through Lyft. And I actually was looking online and According to Lyft Certificate of Liability Insurance in Arizona, at least, they provide a million dollars in liability coverage um, for their drivers, but uh, $250 in underinsured motorist coverage. And that's actually different from Uber. Interestingly, Uber provides $1 million in underinsured motorist coverage. 
So regardless, she's going to be able to recover. There will be two insurance companies that she may want to look into. Um, with it, Lyft and Uber, anytime that there's an accident, um, there's going to be multiple insurance companies involved. She, she'll have her own insurance coverage too, which may be the primary underinsured motorist provider and then Lyft being the secondary. So it's probably a good idea to con consult with an attorney if you have an accident that you have pretty serious injuries with when, when you're a driver. Okay, and then the final question we have from Yes, turn it down. I okay, um, thanks. Miguel says, I was seriously injured in an Uber accident and the insurance company is wanting me to settle for a fairly large amount of money. Uh, what do you think I should do? Well, this is a very open-ended question. Um, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of details that we would need to determine if he would want to settle a claim with Uber. Um, the first question I would have is: Was there another party at fault, or was it the Uber driver that was at fault? I'm assuming it was the Uber driver was at fault, um, and, and in that scenario, he has to determine what was he fully compensated by Uber's insurance for all his injuries, pain and suffering lost wages, any other incidental damages that he has um, that would allow him to feel comfortable settling that claim. These policies are bigger policies, so um, they all have the potential to, to make a full recovery and people don't want to cut their claims short. So if he was injured pretty seriously, I would say first, don't settle immediately. A lot of times the insurance companies want to try to get you to settle right off the bat before you know the full extent of your damages and, and how much time you miss work and what future medical expenses you may have. So those are all things for him to look into. Um, anytime any of these people have questions about whether an offer is fair, I'm always available to kind of go down the list of ideas and, and questions that I would have to be able to kind of at least direct them to, to know whether they're, they're in the right place with, with a settlement offer. All right, excellent. Well, thanks, John. And if you have any other questions, um, thanks, John. Thanks, Ryan.